My name is Nikos Stepanian, and I am a WebAssembly developer advocate at Google. Today we are going to talk about the WebAssembly debugging and look at some of the improvements that MScript and Chrome DevTools have made this in this area for C++ applications. First of all, let's take a look at the basic debugging experience. For this example, let me create a C library for calculate Fibonacci numbers. So I'm defining an expert function fib. It accepts a single parameter and index at which you want to get the Fibonacci number. And the body itself is a fairly straightforward implementation of the algorithm, where each next number is the sum of the previous two. On the HTML side, I'm importing the JavaScript generated by Inscripten, initializing it, and once it's done, I'm calling the exported function with some sample index, let's say 10. Now we need to compile this module. So I'm invoking mcc with fibonacci.c, the file name, and I'm passing some parameters to ensure that it generates an ES module. And I'm building it with optimizations enabled. Now when I go to Chrome, I can see the result in the console, as I would expect. And I can go to the sources panel. When I do that, on the left, I can see the generated JavaScript and WebAssembly files. And I can set a breakpoint at my entry point. And when I do that, it will stop there. And from there, I can step into the mscript and generated JavaScript. When I step in again, I can jump right away from JavaScript into the generated WebAssembly module. Now what I see here is a raw disassembly view of the WebAssembly module. And it looks quite scary, but luckily it's not something that most developers will need to deal with, as it's the most basic debugging experience that you can get without any help from compiler. Still, you can see that DevTools has helpfully generated a function name for us that is showing up in calls text and disassembly. It based it on the export name, so that even when you don't have any debugging information attached, you still at least get readable stack traces. We can also see that our parameter got medical deaths R0, and we can even scroll to the scope view and see the value 10 we passed from the JavaScript side. In this view, I can also step over the individual instructions. I can enter our main loop. I can set a breakpoint to, say, run the loop a couple of times. And once I do that, I can see how the var0, our counter, gets decremented, while var1 and var2 look like consequent Fibonacci numbers. And then I also have var3, which, to be honest, I just have no idea what it is, as it is something auto-generated by the compiler. So while this works and provides at least some debugging experience, it's obviously not a great one, as it takes quite a bit of guesswork to understand what all those instructions mean and what all those variables are and how it matches to our original code. Even on such a tiny example, on larger apps, this becomes an even bigger problem. In fact, let me demonstrate a slightly more complicated example. In this one, I'm going to compile a C++ application for drawing a Mandelbrot fractal. You can see how this application is still fairly small. It's a single file containing 50 lines of code. But this time, I'm also using some external libraries, like SDL for graphics, as well as complex numbers from the C++ standard library. So I am initializing SDL, and after that, I am generating a plot with some random colors. I don't care what they are for the purpose of the demo. And then I'm doing a bunch of calculations on complex numbers as per Mandelbrot formulas to determine a set of color of each pixel on the screen. Finally, once it's all over, I'm drawing everything to the canvas. Now I'm going to compile it very similarly to the Fibonacci example, except I'm allowing it to use as much memory as it needs and passing some parameters to link it with the SDL library and generating default HTML instead of the custom one. Once it is compiled, I can open the result in Chrome and see our beautiful fractal shape with some random colors. Once again, I can open DevTools and see the generated JavaScript and WebAssembly in the sources panel. Except this time, when I open the WebAssembly file, it looks a lot, lot larger and quite incomprehensible. So I can still search for the main function and I can recognize some imports and I can set a breakpoint inside of the main function and when I reload the page, it will get hit. And from there, once again, I can step into the main code. But at this point, I just have no idea what all those instructions are and what all those variables mean, as it has zero resemblance with my original code. What we would want instead is to somehow debug the original C++ code we wrote and are actually familiar with this. And turns out we can do just that. First of all, you need to go to the link provided on the screen and install this Chrome extension. It's been developed by the Chrome DevTools team to support debug information provided by Inscripten. Once it is installed, let's recompile the module by disabling optimizations and enabling debugging via the HTFlag instead. 
I'm also adding one extra flag to specify where DevTools should be looking for sources. In this case, in the parent directory from the dist folder we compiled to. Now let me compile it. This time, when I open DevTools, then in addition to the usual JavaScript and WebAssembly, I can see that it locates and finds my original C++ code as well. I can not only see it, but I can also set a breakpoint inside of it. And when I reload the page, it will stop right there instead of the raw disassembly. Moreover, if I look in the scope view, then instead of some auto-generated names, I can now see the original C++ variables as well with their corresponding types. When stepping, I'm also no longer stepping through individual instructions, but rather over familiar source-level C++ expressions. For now, the only variables that are initialized are width and height, but let me skip, for example, past the palette generation. Once I do that, I can expand the palette array as well as expand the nested structures and look at the colors it generated and verify that they look OK and random enough. From there, I can step over, for example, center initialization, and I can observe the real and imaginary parts of the complex number. I can also step into the loop. And once I'm inside of it, I can see the x and y variables as well. So let me step a few more times. I have generated point. I can verify that it's generated to 0, 0. Let me run it a few more times. This time x is 3, and the point real part should be non zero. When I expand it, yeah, I can verify that. Similarly, I can step through a few more variables. And let me just skip to the part where it picks the color. At this point, we can cut it from the palette. I step through that. And now I can expand the color and check which RGB values it picked for this pixel. To summarize, I believe that this provides a much more natural debugging experience with source level breakpoints, steps, and value formatters that you can already use today for your apps. One thing that is worth noting is that for larger apps, the debugging information can be much larger than the WebAssembly code and data itself. And it might be desirable to split it out so that it doesn't get downloaded for non debugging sessions. For our Mandelbrot example above, we can check the file size of the generated WebAssembly and see that it's around 670 kilobytes. Now we can recompile it just like above, but with one extra option, dash g separate dwarf, which allows to specify a file name where I'm scripting should split out and put the debug build. When we do that and check the binary size again, we can see that we got down by 25, almost 30 kilobytes. This doesn't look like much because we only have a single 50 line source file. But as your application grows, situation quickly gets flipped and the debugging information can be actually taking most of the space in the binary. In fact, Google Earth is successfully using the new debugging experience combined with this option to debug WebAssembly builds of their large C++ application on the web. You can see how they can also set breakpoints in the source of, say, a click handler, and they can trigger them from the web page, step through the C++ expressions, and observe the variables, just like we did in our trivial demo. All in all, these are some amazing improvements that will unlock even more applications and allow them to bring their experiences to even more users across the shared cross-platform web. Still, it's not the end of the journey. There are still more features that we are working on. Just to name a few, we'll be adding Linear Memory Inspector for raw memory view, custom formatters for C++ types, working on improved profiling, code coverage support, and many more. Thank you for listening, and please stay tuned for the future updates.